Osborne Reynolds was the first person to demonstrate that a combination of variables could be used to distinguish flow into two types, laminar and turbulent. Using dimensional analysis, you can find a common relationship between the characteristic length, velocity, density, and viscosity of the fluid being tested. These parameters combined make Reynolds' number. Reynolds' number is equal to the density times the velocity times the characteristic length over the viscosity of the fluid. Its significance is the ratio of inertial forces to viscous forces on a fluid element. When Reynolds' number is less than an order of magnitude of 10 to the third, fluid flow is characterized as being laminar. In this type of fluid flow, viscous forces dominate inertial forces. Variations in velocity in laminar flow are smooth and predictable. Streamlines are parallel to one another, allowing for precise calculations and models to be made. When Reynolds' number is greater than an order of magnitude of 10 to the fourth, fluid flow is characterized as being turbulent. This type of flow is dominated by inertial forces. Turbulent flow has large fluctuations in velocity and the dominating inertial forces cause swirling, unsteady, circular eddies to form within the flow. The swirling fluid causes turbulence and makes mixing within the fluid. Turbulent flow is unpredictable and makes analyzing fluid characteristics much more complicated. Reynolds' number is applied in many different types of industries to classify the types of flow that will be encountered in specific flow systems. In order to design real-world systems, engineers use scaled models to simulate actual flow so that it can be easier to analyze. Reynolds' number is important in flow systems because it has value in both the model and the real world. Reynolds' number is used when analyzing aerodynamic flow. The more flow separation that appears over the wing or of a plane or back of a vehicle increases the total drag force and ultimately reduces efficiency.